talk to us. 15 cities in five years. All of them are going to be outside the U.S. and also outside China. And we'll get back to that in just a bit. But can you give us an idea? What, uh, what, what cities are we talking about here? Well, basically major cities in Europe and in Middle East. And we are going to take a phased approach. That means like every year we'll bring uh, several cities online in the Uber platform. Of course, we have to pass through the regulatory uh, requirement and also safety is our top priority. So we will take a step-by-step -step approach, but good things we have already proved our uh, business model and technology in the current deployment in Abu Dhabi and soon we will bring Dubai online. So uh, we are quite confident about the, the, the plan and uh, I think uh, for for which cities, you know, currently I cannot uh, explicitly name them, but, you know, there are many in Europe and in the Middle East. Tony, congratulations on this expanded partnership. Can you give us a sense of how the revenue share will work? Are we talking about a fixed service fee that will be provided or will it be a per kilometre or usage based? Uh, so it's kind of like a combined model. We will we will charge a kind of a certain minimum fixed fee, and then you know we will split the revenue. And a good thing is like uh, um, this partnership like creates new opt-in opportunities in each market. And we are not just deploying technology; we are participating in the local transportation ecosystem, uh, creating jobs in fleet management, maintenance, and customer service while helping address urban mobility challenges. Tony, one of your major competitors, uh, Pony AI, also announcing this similar partnership with Uber. Have you sought clarification from Uber about whether or not their expansion into the Middle East will be divided in terms of segmentation of geography or will potentially uh, both you and Pony AI be competing in the same cities? If the latter is the case, how does that impact your competitive advantage here? So first of all, I want to emphasize uh, the technology competence of what we write. We write so as the first mover and the industrial leader is currently the only autonomous driving company holding the driver's permit in five countries. That's China, UAE, uh, Singapore, France, and US. And we also hold our most perfect uh, uh, track record in, in safety. And, uh, you know, to plan with, to work with Uber, uh, our WeRide's plan is very concrete. That is 15 cities in the next five years. And we are going to deploy at least 50 uh, robot taxi in Abu Dhabi. And soon we'll bring Dubai online. So they are all very concrete uh, plans. And uh, for competition, you know, uh, WeRide as one of the best technology company, autonomous driving comp company in the world. Uh, we are very confident with uh, our capability. And over the past several years, we have uh, approved our technology and has a proven business model. Indeed. I also wanted to just ask about the caveat here. No, China is part of that partnership. That's understandable given that Uber is not operating in that market. Also, uh, no United States. And I recall uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we spoke about this and you said, look, our hands are really full. We've got a full plate. We're mm -hmm. looking at expansion in all of these other regions. I wanted to just follow up, though, and ask whether or not a key reason is the regulatory environment in the U.S. as well. I think I think my answer remains the same. Um, you know, the global market is huge, huge market. I think about uh, we rise. We rise has about uh, one thousand elite engineers and another two thousand, the data annotations and operating people, and you know we really got our hands full. Um, think about every time when you deploy a, a fleet, you need to make sure your car is cleaned very well and uh, it's charged. And uh, and also uh, you have to really uh, supply the, the service with a good experience that costs lots of uh, efforts. And uh, we we are taking a phased approach. That is, every year we bring several new cities into Uber platform, and it's a very thorough plan. And uh, therefore, you know, uh, look at the, the broad broad uh, a broad future of. Uh, Europe and the Middle East. I think currently we are focusing on European and the Middle East market. But in the future, we are also looking for other markets where, you know, uh, there are shortage of 
drivers and uh, there's a, a, a valid business model we, we will deploy there. Of course, partnership is very important. We are glad to, uh, to maintain and extend this uh, partnership with Uber. Tony, uh, talking about uh, drivers, you know, we were uh, just telling folks uh, before we got to you uh, about Uber's deal with uh, Pony AI in the Middle East, right? And in the pilot mm -hmm. phase, those robo-taxis are going to come with a safety operator on board. Are you planning something similar? And, uh, and I guess what I'm trying to get to is this, right? In terms of, yeah, uh, in terms yeah, of yeah, uh, safety, that's obviously an issue, right? But there's also sort of user or passenger psychology to help them you know get more comfortable with the idea of getting into a car which does have not doesn't have a visible driver uh, something like that at least initially would pro probably be a good soft way in wouldn't you agree so first of all i want to emphasize like uh, when we write try to deploy the robo taxi service with uber we right is trying to de uh, deploy the robo taxi uh, driverless uh, you know uh, in a sense of driverless vehicle okay so we have driverless permit again in china uae singapore france and the united states that is we are the only company holding this five driverless permit so our deployment plan for robo taxi is without safety driver that means that has a valid proven business model. When it comes to the safety issue, of course, we are going to take a progressive approach. So first of all, for the people who have never taken a self-driving car, and you, you probably uh, let them experience first, and of course, they will be, they'll be very cautious. But if, if you have experienced like uh, the robot taxi in San Francisco, uh, in Guangzhou, in China, and you will know like the first time you will feel like really excited, after two or three times of ride, and you just say you're taking a normal taxi. And sometimes, most of the time, uh, the robot taxi is actually uh, is smoother. Uh, is it is also uh, a very very uh, comfortable, even than a, a very experienced human driver. So, uh, Tony, just to, to recap, so uh, we ride robo taxis in these 15 cities you're launching in are not going to come with a safety operator on board. In other words, you're very confident about uh, your technology that it's essentially safe, right? Uh, from usage so far, what has your safety track record been? Oh, the safety track record, so currently to our, to, 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 to of our best knowledge, uh, we have no accidents actually due to our faults. And, uh, you know, there are some accidents involved, but it's always uh, like human drivers, human factors, error, human, some human drivers make some mistakes. Um, so um, to me, like, uh, you know, that record is really very, very, very difficult to keep. And, uh, you know, um, so um, that's because of philosophy. We write to a very extensive testing and simulation. And when we roll out new software, we have already do a already extensive uh, verification and test. Uh, that's okay. how we keep safety, yeah. 